Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the workers' training tonight. We pray you speak to every heart by your spirit in Jesus' name. We pray we will not be forgetful hearers. We will be doers of the word. And the blessings will come upon every soul in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Luke chapter 19. I read verse 10, verse 13, verse 17, and verse 22. Verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Connect that with verse 13. And he said, and he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. What's the connection? In verse 10, the Son of Man, the Son of God, our Savior, our Redeemer, came to this world to save that which was lost. It was about getting to Jerusalem and getting to the cross. And the lost was still in the world. You leave a lot of the lost people, a lot of sinners in the world. If he had remained here, he will continue to save that which was lost. But because he is the head of the church, and the church is the body. The head is gone to heaven. Now he tells the body, members of the body remaining behind, the work I should have been doing is saving the lost. Now I give it to you. Occupy till I come. Occupy in that service. Occupy in seeking for sinners and leading those sinners to him as savior and eventually as he has gone he'll come again when he comes back each one will give a report a record of what he has done an account verse 17 and he said unto him well thou good servant because thou hast been faithful in a little, art thou authority over ten cities? When he comes back, he'll check up on us, on our faithfulness. For the faithful, the faithful will be rewarded, but for the unfaithful. Verse 22, and he said unto him, out of thy mouth will I judge thee, the wicked servant. To be unfaithful is to be wicked. To see the lost and know what it means for them to be lost for all eternity. And not to seek after them is wickedness. And to know the way to life eternal. And see people who are going to doom damnation eternal. And not to say a word to help them and bring them out of darkness into the light that's wickedness and to have received grace and favor and love from the lord and other people have brought us in and then we refuse to go out to others who are lost like we were lost and not to bring them into the kingdom is a height of wickedness Unfaithfulness translates to wickedness. And he said unto him, Out of thy mouth will I judge thee, the wicked servant, thou knewest, that I was an austere man, an hard man, a demanding man, taking up that which I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. And eventually, the, 
the end of it is that he was apportioned with the unbelievers and the sinners. Tonight we're looking at the message, Great Rewards for the Faithful in Christ. Great Rewards for the Faithful in Christ. From Abraham to Zechariah, God demanded and rewarded faithfulness. That is, with all the children of God, with all the servants of God, from A to Z, from the beginning to the very end, from Abraham to Zechariah, this is one thing God demands. This is one thing is going to reward faithfulness. Genesis chapter 22, reading from verse 18. Genesis 22, reading from verse 18. In verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. To obey is to be faithful. To be faithful is to obey. Obeying the commandments of God and doing exactly what the Lord demands, that's faithfulness. And because of that, God said, it was going to be a blessing, not only to his own little nuclear family, local family, but to all the families of the earth. In Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel of the Lord, what the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Zechariah, though at this time did not have a child, and already a grown old, aged, yet remained faithful in the service of the Lord, and the reward eventually came. As we look at the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, the unchanging God requires and recompenses faithfulness. You go back to the very beginning, which we have done, but we are going back there, Genesis chapter 26, reading from verse 4. God requires faithfulness from you, from me, from everyone, and he rewards, recompenses, faithfulness. Genesis chapter 26, reading from verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that... Abraham obeyed my voice. The Lord was talking to his son Isaac. And he said, this is what I'm going to do for you. Because your father Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes, and my laws. Verse 12. In verse 12, then Isaac sought in that land and received in that same year an hundredfold. See what the Lord has done. He planted, he sowed, he cultivated, and the work of his son was blessed a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. In verse 24, the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not. For I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. You see the obedience of Abraham still following Isaac. You see his faithfulness still being rewarded even after he has gone. Revelation chapter 2, from Genesis to Revelation 
God requires and God recompenses faithfulness. And that's why we're here today. We stand in between Abraham and Zacharias, whatever our name may be. I will stand between Genesis and Revelation in the period we live, any period we're living. And all through that period of time, God demands and God requires faithfulness. That means from you, from me, from everyone, it demands faithfulness. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. In verse 10 it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Doing anything tangible, anything profitable, anything commendable, anything progressive here on earth will have some kind of pain, some kind of suffering, and some kind of discomfort, and some kind of self-denial, some kind of pressure. And it says, don't fear to sweat, and don't, don't fear to suffer some pain, and to go through some agony. That's how life is. Anything we're going to do, even from the smallest to the greatest, there's something we have to endure. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison. The devil will try to limit us, will try to encompass us with some walls that will make an effort to jump before we can get out of that incarceration and some limitation. The devil will put in your way and around you and maybe around your family. And yet it says that he may be tried is to try your faithfulness, is to test your faithfulness. Will you give excuse because of this little challenge? I cannot save the lost. I cannot be occupied until he comes. And so will be tried. And then it says, You shall have trouble, tribulation, ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Until then, let us be faithful. We're going to be faithful in Jesus' name. By the way, those who are lazy, they die too. Those who are unfaithful, they die too. Those who are indolent, they die too. Those who do nothing, just waking up and sleeping and eating every day, they die too. So it is not the faithfulness that makes us die. It's appointed unto men who wants to die. And after this, the judgment. And so whether you are faithful or not faithful, one day you will die. But the Lord is saying to die gloriously and to die happily and to die with no regrets. Be faithful until the time of death. And I will give thee a crown of life. You will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Faithful sons will be rewarded. Faithful saints will be rewarded. Faithful servants will be rewarded. Now in this life and hereafter in the life to come. You are faithful to God. He will make sure that he rewards you here in life. And in the world to come. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest, a faithful preacher, a faithful pastor, a faithful Levite, a faithful worker, a faithful servant. A faithful steward, I will raise me up, a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. What's in the mind of the Lord right now? What's in the mind of Christ right now? Seek the lost. Seek the lost. If he were here, that would be the number one thing he'll be doing. If Jesus Christ had remained here on earth, this would be the one non-negotiable sin. He will not negotiate with anyone any day, every day, any week, every week. This would be on his heart and this would be on his mind. 
the God who is not willing that anyone should perish was on his mind that the lost or the sought and the Lord, the lost will be saved and I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointed how long? Forever. Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, he rewards the faithful, and he delights in the faithful. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. If you are not faithful, you are not good in the sight of God. If you are not seeking the laws, if you see the people who are perishing and it doesn't concern you, you are not good in the sight of the Lord. You might give high sounding testimonies. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost, I'm dedicated, I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord. Those are just words. Faithfulness and goodness go together. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And it tells us in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 42. Luke chapter 12 verse 42 and the Lord said who then is a faithful and wise steward if you are not faithful you are not wise you might claim you are wise you are stingily spending your time you are selfishly spending your time and you are doing everything you can do to get all the money you can get in the world and you are after this certificate and another certificate and you think because of that you are wise no you are not if you are not faithful you are not wise because you are not wise enough to understand that faithfulness is the only thing god is going to reward on the final day if you are not faithful you are wise it says who then is that faithful and wise to watch whom his lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season in due season the people you ought to preach to today preach to them tomorrow they might have died they might have gone and so in due season at the right time while the need is there while the people are expecting that somebody will come to come to them to seek for them and to save them in due time give them that portion blessed is that servant whom is lord when he cometh shall find so doing not enough that i did it last year not enough i did it when i first became a christian not enough i was zealous when i first came into the kingdom when it comes, blessed are those servants whom the Lord will still find so doing of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. There will be reward on the final day. I pray you will not miss that reward. Great rewards of the faithful in Christ. We'll come back to Luke chapter 19. As we look at this portion of Luke chapter 19, from verse 10 through to verse 27, there are three things we see very clearly mapped out. Number one, the profitable occupation of faithful servants. The profitable occupation of profitable servants. Point number two, the punishable offense of fault finding scorners. Here this servant came and look at the scorn that she heaped on the Lord. He said he knew the Lord was an austere man. He said the Lord was a selfish man. 
He said the Lord was expecting to reap where he did not sow. And so he will not do anything for such an austere, hard-hearted, seriously demanding master. It was a false finding scorner. The punishable offense of false finding scorners. Point number three. The presentable obedience of a fruitful saint. The presentable obedience of a fruitful saint. They came to present what they had got unto the Lord when he came back. And he said, you give me this talent, I've gained ten others. I present that to you. And then you give me this, I've gained five others. I present it back to you. The presentable obedience of a fruitful saint. Think about it. What are you going to present to the Lord on the day of reckoning, on the day of account, that you did your own will, you didn't do his will, you obeyed yourself, your self-will, you didn't obey the Savior? What are you going to present to the Lord? Are you going to present obedience? You said, I should go and do this. That's exactly what I did. And I came on, I want to present to you is my obedience that made me fruitful in the kingdom. The presentable obedience of a fruitful saint. Number one, the profitable occupation of faithful servants. We're coming to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He said, as the Master, as the Lord, as the Savior, is all I did. Did he heal the sick? He was using that healing to draw them to himself. Did he say, let us go to other cities also? He was going to those other cities to seek the lost. And did he say, your sins are forgiven? It was an evidence, those people that were sinners, they were lost. And in forgiving them, he found them. He was lost, but now he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive. And that same thing that he did, look at verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nice unto Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. They said, well, we don't have anything to do. The kingdom of God is going to come. Is it going to immediately appear? And there is no effort we're going to make. And there is no preaching we're going to do. There is no assignment we're going to carry out. All we will do now is to religiously, spiritually wait somewhere for the kingdom to come. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, delivered them ten pounds. They didn't have that before. Every gift you have, you didn't have that before. The Lord gave that to you, the gift of life. The gift of health, the gift of strength, the gift of intelligence, and the talent of spiritual life, and the knowledge of the Bible, and the knowledge of the Savior, and the knowledge of heaven, and the knowledge of hell, all the knowledge you have, that's the talent. He wants you to use all that knowledge. He gave that to you. And he said, with this talent you have, with this gift you have, your health, occupy with it till I come. Your strength, occupy with it till I come. Your intelligence, occupy with that till I come. Your contacts and the possibilities of your life, occupy with that till I come. And your joy of salvation, occupy with that. Because of that joy, let that joy drive you. Everything you've got, all the gifts of God, occupy till I come. 
He wants us to be occupied in what he himself would have been doing if he were here. What would he have been doing? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I read from verse 31. This is the work of the master. This is what he came to do. And this is what is calling upon you, calling upon me to also go out and do. And Jesus answering said unto them, Luke chapter 5, verse 31. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. He's saying there are so many sick people in the world. They need a physician. They seek in their soul. They seek in their body. They seek in their mind. They seek in their understanding. In every family, there's a sick person. In every community, there's a sick person. They seek mentally. They seek spiritually. And they seek physically as well. And it says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's what he would have been doing if he had remained here. He couldn't remain here. He had to go. To go and prepare a place for us. He couldn't have remained here. He had to sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And when he sacrificed on the cross of Calvary, he shed his blood for the whole of humanity. He couldn't have remained here. He had to rise from the dead. He had to, be, he had to ascend. He had to ascend to heaven. He had to go back to heaven to present his blood unto the Father for your redemption, for my redemption, for your justification, for my justification. And now, because we're his body, he has given that to us. And he has said, occupy until I come. What are we to be occupied in? Calling sinners to repentance. Calling sinners to repentance. John chapter 4, reading from verse 34. John chapter 4, verse 34. It says, Jesus says unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My will is to do the will of him that sent me. He said, if he had remained here, he still keep on doing that will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? The will of the Father is that all that come to me, I will lose none they will be saved. How will they come? Somebody has to tell them. Somebody has to inform them. Somebody has to tell them of the grace of God, of the love of God. And then after that, he now said in verse 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, then cometh the harvest. He said, I never say that, that I'll rest now. I cannot do anything now. I'll do that later. I never push till tomorrow. The person that ought to get saved today, any journey I ought to take, any soul I need to contact, any message I ought to give, I do not ever push it until tomorrow if I'm to do it today. Why? Even when I'm hungry, even when I'm tired, even when I'm weary, and I see a soul there, and I say, this is why I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. I never give in to my tiredness. It says the same thing I expect of you, my disciples. The profitable occupation of faithful servants. Say not ye, that yet for months and then cometh harvest. Behold. I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Get up and get going and do something. Lose no day, lose no minute, and lose no hour. And then it says, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is, is the same true. One soweth and another reapeth. I send you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. He's talking about continuity, continuity. That is, other men labored, 
there should be no gap. The apostles have done their part. And when the apostle goes, as they're not going to live here forever, the next generation must take over. And there must be no gap because every day people are being born into the world. And every day people are dying and going out of the world. It's like the river flowing. One a part of the river is flowing up and part of the river is flowing in. And if uh, all these uh, people are passing through time and they're passing through us and they're passing through our communities, it says you must not allow any gap keep on ministering occupy till I come why second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 second Peter chapter 3 we're reading from verse 9 here the word of God makes it very clear what work we're to do and what work must go on and what assignment must go on until he comes and we're occupied and we're busy and we're diligent and we're devoted unto the work he would have been doing if he were here in the world what's that work in second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but his long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish many are perishing but that's not the will of god is because the servants are not faithful the saints are not faithful the children of god are not faithful they we know enough to get everyone in the city saved if we just if we just tell them there's enough water from the ocean from the sea provided for everyone to quench their thirst there's enough food for everyone to eat so that they will not die of starvation and there's enough air to breathe so that we do not die of lack of oxygen and yet many people are dying many people are suffocating and many people are just breathing in the carbon dioxide they breathed out and because of that that thing does not have life they are dying they're in that religious assembly they are in that religious fellowship and all that they're giving to them is something that doesn't have life and yet we have the watch of the gospel the word of salvation and god is not willing that any should perish they perish because many people are not faithful it says but that all should come to repentance all should come to repentance we need to go out and tell them Luke chapter 24 Luke chapter 24 I'm reading from verse 46 Luke chapter 24 verse 46 and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day you know what Jesus was saying? He said, I come to fulfill that which was written. It was written. It was written. It was written. I came to fulfill that. And all that were studying as workers, all were learning as workers, the things that are written, be occupied until I come. That's written. And our life is to be a fulfillment of that which is written, verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. You find yourself in this nation. Other people find themselves in other nations. And we take that word from the Lord that in every nation, in all nations where we are, there's just one priority. And there's one preeminent thing that should consume our time. 
and there is one solitary thing that should take all our effort it takes to present the gospel of repentance and faith in Christ to everybody we meet is to be done in all nations if every Christian in every nation will follow what is reaching it will be done in all nations the word of God the word of salvation the word of grace the word of life eternal will be preached and will be given to people and we will be occupied not chasing after money which will be of no value after the rapture not going after material things which will not benefit you after the rapture as gone as uh, happened and the chasing after popularity of the things of the world which is not going to be of any benefit after we are taken to heaven and the antichrist takes over in the world if we knew what ought to be done and if we had the right perspective this is the commitment of every child of God in every nation and in every city until he comes. Look at that verse 47 again. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Not ending at Jerusalem with the apostles. The apostles only started. And we are to continue in every town, every village, every city, every part of the whole nation. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 30. Acts, chapter 17, we're reading from verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. God, com God commandeth everyone, all men everywhere to repent. Uh, you, you know that uh, verse, and you know that he has commanded all men everywhere to repent. But think about it now. How many people in our community actually knows that God? has commanded all men everywhere in that community to repent you can you can carry on a check if you meet somebody you can ask him can you tell me something that god has commanded you to do and you have not done it can you recollect anything the lord has commanded you to do and you're even ignorant of it and you are living happily and joyfully and moving on and you are moving towards the edge much part the greater part of your life is already gone only a little remains and yet if i asked you now if you die today where will you go you say i'll go to heaven on what basis i go to church on what basis i was baptized as an infant on what basis I turned over a new leaf? On what basis I make resolution, I determine that I'll do the best I can? On what basis I'm better than all the other people I see in my community? Okay, push that aside. There's one commandment he has given you. And what commandment is that? Let's see, they don't know. Look at it. God now commands all men everywhere to repent i pray we will not miss out on this work he has given us in jesus name go and enlighten them go and show them the light go and show them the knowledge of what god requires that's the occupation that's the work that's the assignment he has given us to do revelation chapter 2 verse 25 Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Hold it fast. The devil will try to take it out of your hand. Circumstances will try to take it out of your hand. 
and the pressures of life will try to take it out of your hand and your own thoughts and your own mind will try to take it out of your hand the happenings every day the things that happen every day they'll try to shift your attention and shift your focus and take it away from you and religious duty religious activities will crowd into your life to try to take it out of your hand don't allow that that which you have already hold fast till i come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works occupation assignment duty the deeds and keep it my works unto the end occupy till i come that keep it my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations i pray will not be negligent i will not be negligent second timothy Chapter 2, verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The things you have heard of me among many witnesses. What does that mean? I want you to single yourself out. Think about it now. As if I told you and you alone. To stand up and you're standing up just one person and then you look around and the things you have heard of me among all these many witnesses you have a duty the same commit thou to faithful men find another person in fact more than one person the things you are hearing the things you are learning don't be like the Dead Sea, that the water, the rivers will flow in and they never flow out. And the Dead Sea will be stinking eventually as it flows in. Make an outlet and let it flow out and single yourself out. The things you have heard of me among these many witnesses the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also multiply the effect of the workers multiply your effect as a worker be fruitful look at verse 3 now therefore endure hardness the sadness there's some people they think that working for god is like to lie on a bed of roses no challenge no difficulty no pressure no hardship no criticism well all those things are part of life and they're the regular things that happen in life it says endure and still do your work endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life affairs of this life affairs of this life they bring entanglement if your mind is so much into this into that which everybody is thinking about now you will be entangled and you will not please him who has chosen you to be a soldier no man that worries entangles himself no woman that worries entangles herself with the affairs of this life that he that she may please him please the lord who has chosen him who has chosen her to be a soldier the profitable occupation of faithful servants point number two the punishable offense of fault finding corners the punishable offense of fault finding corners we're coming to luke chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 20 in verse 20 and another came saying lord he called him lord but will not do what the lord had said he called him lord but will not be occupied 
in the things the Lord has uh, told him it should be occupied in. And there are people that give excuses, they hide the excuses under the absence of a title. I'm not an apostle, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher, and I'm not a worker. Have you noticed that there are many people, they're born again, the children of God, they're saved, they have grace, the same grace you have. They have knowledge of the Bible, members of our church, the same knowledge you have. And they have the understanding Christ is coming again, the same understanding you have. And they have intelligence, the same intelligence you have. And they count years, the same number of years you can count, they can count too. They have all the things we have spiritually, mentally, materially. They have everything except the title worker. And because they say they are not workers, because they say they don't have any title, they forget that they call Christ Lord. And if you call him Lord, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You see your Lord, yes. You see your Savior, yes. You see your Redeemer, yes. He has given every member of his body something to do. Similar to what he did when he was there. And this one came and said, Lord, behold, here is thy pound here is thy pound the brain he gave you that's a pound the mouth he gave you that's a pound the communication ability he gave you that's the pound the knowledge and the insight into the fact that whosoever is not found reaching the book of life is cast into the lake of fire that knowledge that's a pound and the desire that ought to be in your heart is getting lost, is perishing. You know, there's a natural quality as giving us. I must save him from the danger. That's the pouch. But this fellow is not making use of anything the Lord has given him, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee. He had a wrong attitude. Uh, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And because he first loved us, we love him. He didn't love the Lord, but he feared the Lord. He was under the terror of Satan. Because uh, the devils believe that there is God and they tremble. I feared thee. Because thou art an austere man. He didn't know the Lord. He didn't know the Lord. An austere man. Christ? No. He's merciful. He's loving. He's compassionate. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He heals. He delivers. You call him austere. You're gonna stray. Thou takest up that thou, that thou layest not down. That's not true. He gave the foundation, the foundation of faith. He gave is the author and the finisher of our faith. He gave us grace. He's full of grace and is full of the truth. He gave us everything we have got. Every gift, every good and perfect gift came from above, from the Father of lights. And you say that he is uh, trying to take up where he laid not down, that's not true, and repest thou where thou hast not sown, that's not true. He sowed his life as a seed. He died on the cross of Calvary. Everything we have is coming out of what he has given. This one has gone astray. And so he said unto him, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, the wicked servant. A person trying to justify his laziness, his wickedness, trying to justify his idleness, 
that's wickedness try to say i'm not a worker it's like you know your child uh, seeing uh, the house on fire and uh, he could have done something and your child uh, did nothing and you came the whole house is burnt down and your child just came out of the house and was looking at the house burning he'll not even raise his voice and he'll not uh, pour water or sand or anything he'll not do anything the neighbors are more concerned that your house is burning that your child uh, will do and then you ask your son you say why did you act like this i'm not a firefighter but you are my son and that's our house together and christ is saying this our kingdom together what you build with me are you so selfish are you so self-centered are you so inward looking you know, that you cannot see that you have something to do you'll be judged thou knewest that i was an austere man taking up that i laid not down and reaping that i did not sow wherefore then givest not thou my money into the bank and that i might that at my coming i might have required my own with interest with increase with profit with usury what did not you transfer to another person are there people that are occupying space and they will not do what needs to be done and yet they will not allow any, another person to take that place other people are watching other people could have done what you are neglecting to do but no they won't do it and they won't allow others to do it and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound take from him the pound what you don't use you lose have you noticed if you hang up your hand i am losing your arm in uh, some weeks or some months you'll not know how to use that hand again if you make your brain to go follow and you're not using the brain you will not read you will not think you will not calculate anything you will not use the brain the brain will lose its sensitivity you'll not be able to use that brain anymore it will die it will atrophy and so what you don't use you lose you have the, the knowledge of the word of god you don't use it you're going to lose it and you have the ability to go to places and to go and tell other people here is it you can be saved when you use it to gather momentum when you use it to have more courage when you use it to have more love when you use it to have more vision but if you don't use what you've got eventually you'll be dull eventually you'll be inactive eventually you'll not even know what to do and he says give it to him that has 10 pounds the busiest people are the most productive people they're busy on this this and that give them another assignment they're up to it and they search unto him lord he has 10 pounds he says for i say unto you that unto everyone that has shall be given and from him that has not even that he has shall be taken away from him matthew 25. in matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 24 here is a similar uh, parable i want to see some more details here matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 24 then he which had received one talent came and said lord i knew thee that thou art an hard man austere reaping where thou was not sown and gathering where thou was not strawed i was afraid i feared thee and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast thine that is thine you have noticed some people that say i've not lost my salvation i keep that salvation but they do nothing they say nothing to anyone they touch no life they don't share that salvation the joy of salvation with other people i've kept it 
I'm keeping it. Yes, I'm not involved. Yes, I'm not active. Yes, I'm not proactive. Yes, I'm not doing anything. You know? But I've kept what I've got. It's more than that. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, The wicked are slothful servants. Slothful people are wicked. They're wicked to themselves. They're wicked to their families. The wicked to their neighbors, slothful and wicked, wicked and slothful. The newest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to approach my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have, uh, I should have received my own with interest, with gain, with profit, with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. Look at verse 20. And these are the words of Jesus. Look at verse 30. And this is the conclusion. This is the very conclusion of the Lord Jesus. What will happen to the wicked servant, to the unfaithful servant, to the unprofitable servant, and to the slothful, lazy servant. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth you don't need a theologian to interpret that for you it's very clear it's giving you assignment it's giving you a deed it's giving you a work to do and you refuse to do it and you fold your hand and you see people drowning you do nothing you even not even raise your voice that other people will come and rescue them and you're looking at them perishing and perishing and perishing and you will not do anything at all slothful unprofitable unfaithful it says you're casting to outer darkness the words of jesus there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears look at amos Chapter 6, verse 1. Amos, chapter 6, reading from verse 1. In Amos, chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. They rather sleep, they rather close their eyes to what's happening around them, rather close their ears to the cries of the lost those who are perishing they want to live in luxury and they want to live in ease all they want is comfort they do not want anything to make them sweat or to make them do any work at all watch them that at ease in zion look at verse 4 that lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and cast out of the midst of the stall that chant that sing to the sound of the veal music and invent themselves instruments of music like David that drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. They are not grieved for the people who are perishing. James chapter 4, verse 17. James chapter 4. Verse 17, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good 
and doeth it not, to him it is sin. To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Let's come back to Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 14. Luke 19, verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. They scorned him. There was coffers. And these people said, We don't want the Son of God, the Son of Man, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to reign over us. And these ones were not part of the people that had the talents. These were sinners. They heard about Christ. They heard about the Lord. But they said, no, we're not going to submit to his sovereignty. We're not going to submit to his lordship. We'll not have this man to reign over us. Verse 27. And those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. There's judgment for those who refuse Christ. Those who refuse the lordship of Christ and they refuse the royalty of Christ. Psalm 2, reading from verse 1. Psalm 2, reading from verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder. We'll not have him control us. We'll not have him direct us. We'll not have him rule over us. We'll not have him reign over us. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy, holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron, with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, don't reject. Be wise now, don't resist. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, and be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son. Believe the Son. Love the Son. Have affection for the Son. Lest ye be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little blessed are all they that put their trust in him i pray your trust will be in him he will reign over you you'll not reject his reign psalm 9 verse 17 psalm 9 verse 17 the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Luke chapter 19, point number three, the presentable obedience of a fruitful sage. Presentable obedience of a fruitful saint. Luke Chapter 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants 
and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. The only acceptable response to that, Occupy till I come, is obedience. Is go out and make use of the talent. Is to go out and do what he has instructed to be done. Verse 15. In verse 15, and it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, he will receive the kingdom. He will have dominion. He will reign forever and ever. It says, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, the talent, the pound, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. Thy pound had gained ten pounds. How did you make it? To make one pound gain ten pounds? He was thoughtful. In the work of God, we have to be thoughtful. What can I do with this gospel of God? What can I do in this community in which I live? What can I do to occupy until it comes? What method will I use? He was thoughtful. He planned the work. There must be planning. You cannot just make one pound, produce ten pounds without some planning. How do I spend my time? How do I concentrate? How, what do I do with this ten pound to multiply it? I don't know when the Lord will come. It may come in the morning, at in the afternoon, or in the night. It may come so very soon. I want to gain before he comes. He had strategy. Strategy of making the pound yield more. Strategy. This word of God, this grace of God, this salvation of God. I want another person to be saved. There'll be strategy. Strategy in the, in the place you live. And strategy in the city in which you live. He had determination. There were people that you would approach and then he wanted to multiply the pound. I don't I have no time for you. I'm not thinking of that. He'll go to another person. He'll not allow himself to be discouraged just because some part of the seed fell on the, on the wayside and some fell amongst us and some fell among the rocks. He was looking and walking until some fell on good ground. Keep on doing it. He had to develop strategy and he had to have diligence in the work. A person that is uh, watching the weather and watching the rain and watching the cloud will not do anything. To make one pound produce ten pounds, he had to be diligent about it. And he came and he said, thy pound has gained 10 pounds and then he was not eating up the gain not eating up the gain when he walked when he walked with one pound and one pound came in he plowed that one pound back into the field into the work and then the two pounds gained another pound he didn't eat that up he plowed it back and when you have converts they are not just uh, throwing them okay he is converted now go to another one you disciple them you make them as knowledgeable you make them as zealous as you yourself are and that is the way eventually one turn to two and two turn to three and three produce five and five produce seven and seven eventually produce ten I have gained ten pounds are you thoughtful do you plan is there any diligence is there any determination? And you keep on doing it and doing it until you win souls and those souls abide. And he said unto him, Well, the good servant, because thou hast, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, think about it, the best you can do, even to make one pound yield ten pounds, is still very little. When you think of what you can do today, compare it with what Paul the Apostle did. How he suffered. I was in prison. 
what sacrifice he made, and how he went from place to place. How he was in the prison, and then sometimes he was told, what you can do today compared to what others have done is a very little thing. And even though you might raise up a whole church, or you might mobilize a whole church, uh, if it's still little in the sight of the Lord. And if you cannot be faithful in that little thing, what else are you going to do? You have been faithful over a little. Have thou authority over ten cities? And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. Our opportunities are not equal. Our talents are not equal. Our abilities are not equal. And we're not jealous of those who have gained ten. We're not jealous of those who have higher intelligence or greater success. They're doing theirs. They will receive reward for what they have done. And whatever you can do, keep on at it, keep on at it, keep on at it, and remain diligent. Be as faithful as the other man that is gaining 10 pounds. And then you said, thy pound has gained five pounds. And you said, likewise to him, be thou over five cities. You will not lose your reward. All he's asking for is that you will be faithful. And if you are faithful, thank God you are going to be faithful. I say, thank God you are going to be faithful. The Lord will reward you on that final day in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Uh, let it be said of you, whatever else they cannot say, they might not be able to say is very strong but is faithful. They might not be able to say it's knowledgeable, but they can say it's faithful. They might not be able to say it's, uh, it's of the constitution of a giant, but they should be able to say it's faithful. Whatever else they cannot say about you, let them be able to say, by the grace of God, that brother, that sister is a faithful brother, is a faithful sister. You will be faithful in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, that's it. Be ye steadfast, just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, don't look back. Be steadfast, don't look sideways, keep at it. Don't complain about other people who are not doing it, you keep at it. Don't think about those who are hiding their talents, you keep at it. Be steadfast, unmovable. There are many things that will try to jolt you, many things that will try to move you out of your faithfulness. But be unmovable, always abounding in the work. Always abounding in the work. Always abounding in the work. Don't let a day pass without you contributing something to the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, your labor will not be in vain. In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, the same to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star, and he will give you the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. You will not lose your reward. Revelation chapter 22. 
Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. According as his work shall be. Not according as his intelligence shall be, as his title shall be, as his position shall be, as his authority shall be. No, the people that are position and authority and they do nothing with it, but as his work shall be. From this day, you will increase your work for the Lord. And you'll increase your reward on high in Jesus' name. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. Thank God you'll be there. And you'll not just be there empty-handed, you'll be there with great rewards in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and commit ourselves more unto the Lord. You'll be there. The Lord is coming. And the Lord wants to reward. He's going to reward a faithfulness. You'll be faithful. Whatever he has given you to do, do it faithfully. Occupy till I come.